Welcome back, people, for another edition of Hand Breakdowns with yours truly, Kid Poker, Old Man Poker, Dean Eggs Poker, whatever the hell you want to call me, whatever. As long as you're learning stuff, I don't care. As long as you don't call me a jerk, cause, okay? Because I'm doing this for free. You're not paying nothing, and I'm teaching you stuff, and hopefully you take this to heart. This hand we're going to happens at the Super High Roller Bowl, and it's between two of the young sharks in the game, Connor Drynan and the what I like to call the silent assassin, David Peters. Takes his time, he's always just there, man. Player of the year last year on the GPI, a grinder, knows what he's doing. And this hand is a high level hand between two great players. With Meditor Capital from Surrey, England specifically. I didn't know there were cities other than London out there. <laughs> you know, I, I have a bad habit of doing that too. Whenever somebody's from Britain, I say, oh, where are you from, London? It's just the, the, the idiot American always. <laughs> <laughs> Who, us? Yeah. David Peters making it 3,500 to go with the ace eight of diamonds. And oh. Connor says, I'm your Huckleberry with king nine of hearts. And we'll take a flop. Heads up. That flop looks to me to be Connor's cup of tea. The blinds are 600, 1200. And David Peters comes in for a standard raise to 3,500 with the ace eight of diamonds. Uh, Connor's in the big blind now. He's got king nine of hearts. More than good enough to see the flop with. And what a flop it was. Flop 10, eight, six of hearts. Just absolute gin for Connor Drynan. And all you see for Peters is middle pair. That's a good <laughs> flop for Connor. And just, just for dessert, he has that seven of hearts for the straight flush, just in case <laughs> right. Back Peters up. has a beat. <laughs> and you're going to see Peter, Peters uh, bet here sometimes just for sort of value, protection. There's certain hands Five you want to fold energy. out. There's certain hands you get value from. This is not one of those hands Five that you get value <laughs> from no, King Nine of Hearts. Connor is loving this continuation bet from Peters in the amount of 5,300. He is, and listen, these guys have gone to war many times before, and Connor has Call. done a lot of very active things. He's made a well. Connor checks it over to David Peters, and David Peters rightly decides, okay, well, you know what? I've got middle pair, I've got an ace kicker, very dangerous board. I don't want to let him in there with some stupid hand like, you know, up like two threes with the three of hearts and like make him let him make a flush or something. So he protects his hand with a good size bet of 5,300. Now the question for Connor is, do I spring the trap now and raise him, or do I just play it? Guess, we, do I just play it? Tranquilo, right? I'm just chillax. Don't go crazy. Let the guy hang himself, okay? So, Connor, he decides to just call on the flop, and I'm going to stop, I swear. Okay, when's the turn card come? A lot of big bluffs, so... Ooh. That's a card you don't love seeing if you're Connor. Obviously, the paired board Check. creates the possibility of a full house, which, of course, beats the flush. A flush that is not the nut flush for Connor Drynan. The ace-high heart flush is also a possibility out there as Connor checks it. Over to David. And Peters, in all likelihood, is reaching. Uh, and groundskeeper Willie is firing a second barrel here. And if Connor isn't full or, or flopped a straighter as a flush, Peters is still in the lead, and that's a lot of the time. So there is some method and some logic that's going in by, uh, to, to the decision that David's making here. It's not just going animal and deciding I'm going to continue to bet in the effort to get the guy off trips, a hand. Trips figure to be good. And Connor's going to show up with a lot of 10 combos, 10 jack, 10 queen, etc. He's going to get stubborn with some sixes. He could occasionally find some check raises with a hand like queen jack with a heart. And even with a flush, he, he might just check call like he did. So oh. if but the turn card is a eight. Ocho. Ocho. Ocho make David. Shit, now I'm going to tell you. Okay. The eight on the turn gives David Peters trips. So this could get him into a lot of trouble, right? Because he's still behind. Little does he know. He's got to love that card. You know, what, I'd say nine, more than nine times out of ten, those three eights with the ace high is the best hand. He checks. Uh, Connor checks. And now David Peters decides... 13-2. He's charging him a decent price, and I like the play because, like I said, it's a very draw-heavy board. You know, if Connor does have the ace of hearts or, you know, some sort of straight draw, heart draw kind of situation, uh, he wants to make sure that he charges him for it because he doesn't have a full house yet. Now, if he was already full with, like, 10-8, you could make a case for betting maybe 7,500, but the problem there is 
You don't want to start getting involved in that game too much because the good players, they can read into that. They, they're going to start to know, oh, he's betting less because he's already there. Ooh, he's betting more because he's not there. You don't want to be that readable. Now, once again, Connor's in a spot where he can decide to check raise. And this spot, I definitely like just the call, right? You check raise here, you're going to fold out a lot of hands David Peters um, might bluff with on the river. Uh, and if he does re-raise you, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, he might do that with just ace eight or... You know, he might do that with just the ace of hearts as a bluff or a lot of different hands. So you put yourself in a bad spot by check raising. So overall, I think the call is the right play. If the river is a brick like the deuce of spades and he checks. On oh, the turn, I'm sorry, the river is a seven of spades, which puts four to a straight out there. Could potentially create some pause for David's trips. Not a bad idea for Connor to find some leads here, by the way. You know, he could lead with some straights, but he could also lead with some some bluffy kind of hands. And David is going to check back a lot here on the end. If David had an over pair or even the hand he has, he's going to find a lot of check back. So. And Connor's well aware of that, which is obviously what would influence him to take the lead and make the bet into the aggressor. He is, and, and, and a, a great thing for Connor is that he knows that David knows that he's capable of doing this without a flush or a straight or a full house. And sure enough. 7,000. 7,000 is the bet. I think it might be 27,000. I'm sorry. 7,000 Peters would have flicked in a long time ago. <laughs> Good point. This is just a tough decision. This, this may require Peters to, to use one of his extensions early, which he, he definitely doesn't want to do. But he's trying to figure out all the different hands Connor can have, all the hands he would have defended with pre and continued with in this fashion. How much a, a percentage of the time is Connor bluffing versus value hands? What if Connor's betting a value hand that Peters beats? Does he ever do this with a worse eight? Does he ever do this with a 10? Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a hand like ace 10 here, sometimes you fold out jacks. Sometimes you get queen 10 to get stubborn and call. It's kind of a merge. And it could be a defense. 117,000. Oh, look at this. Peters is raising it up to 117,000, and that's uh, going to make your stomach turn if you're Connor Dryden. I like this so much from Peters, I'm speechless. He has an eight blocker, which is extremely relevant. You know, he's blocking a lot of Connor's full house combos. So having an eight means a lot here because eight seven, eight six, eight ten. These are all full houses, obviously, that beat Connor. And he's just put Connor in a disgusting spot. Look, he could also potentially have the ace high flush, though it's a little more doubtful that he would make the raise on the end with that hand. And as such, Connor's got to fear the full house. Right. He could have an ace high flush. He could have found that raise. But I, I, I think that Connor is, is really fearing that David is full. And, and Connor just has a tough spot. This is pure poker. And as it turns out, it could be an extension in Connor's seat. He only has 40 seconds yeah, to make the decision. And as you see, that placard that he just shipped in there Can we get two of these? Absolutely. is good for an extra one minute. Boy, this is tough. Uh, everything that I said about what Peters is thinking, now Connor is thinking. Mm -hmm. What percentage of hands does Peters open with? Can he give him credit? And how about some tells, Ali? I mean, there you go. You saw okay, Connor glance Morgan, over Connor. at David. Yes, you guys want water. They're bringing six yeah. waters. As Connor would like to try to get a sense of Peter's uh, holding based on his physical mannerisms. Anything that he can pick up off him one or two. would be very useful for him in a time like this. I just didn't want to look like a hog. But he looks pretty he tough to read. Yeah. 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 He's stone-faced. Hi, laddie. We're one, coming up so on the end of that one minute extension. One, Players two, two. can daisy chain them and continue to buy more time if need be, but you do only get five per day. What a play. Connor, you want water? And for people watching, I, that, six I, you that really illustrates the strength of turning good hands into bluffs. Thank you. Or when you're not sure, but you have a relevant card like, like that eight, blocking full houses, and not just calling and saying, I hope I'm good but taking that line where you fold out better a certain percentage of the time. Now the river, things get a little more interesting, okay? The river is the seven of spades. And now Connor Drynan decides to lead out 27,000 on that river. Interesting, so let's think about that more deeply. What's he trying to say now? He's trying to represent a weaker hand than he actually has, right? He's trying to basically say, well, oh, seven got there, I've just made the straight, shucks golly, pay me off, right? 
The problem with this is when you underrep your hand in a spot like that, you open up the possibility that your opponent might think, well, he's got a straight. I can move him off a straight because there's a flush there, there's a potential full house, and as it turns out, David has that eight blocker, so he knows it's far less likely that his opponent has a full house. He would have to have specifically the case eight with an um, with the, you know the ten, the seven, or, or, or the full house card, or he would have to have a pocket pair that flopped the set and played it this way, which is also very unlikely. So because Connor underrepped his hand, like where he basically is saying, I just have a straight, David saw this as an opportunity to say, you know what, I think he's got a straight. I've got three eights with an ace. I can't beat a straight, so I can't call. But guess what I can do? I can pop it up to 117K. So he makes the raise to 117K after a long deliberation because he takes his time. And Connor Drynan, now he's in a tough spot, right? What the hell does he beat? You know, he doesn't beat an ace high flush. He doesn't beat a full house. He only beats a hand that David turned into a bluff. In hindsight, obviously, if he thought about the fact that he underrepped his hand so much, I think he pretty much has to call because he's pretending he's got the straight and he's got so much better than a straight. Like, what if David Peters just says, well, you've got the straight? Okay, well, I'll raise you because I have jack three of hearts. I have a flush or I have a queen high flush. There were hands in David Peters' value range that he might raise with that you still beat with the king high flush. Really tough spot, but it's a spot that Connor put himself in by making the lead. I don't hate the lead that much on the river to try to get value with your flush, but if you do make it, man, I think you got a call. I do. I think you got to pull the trigger and just say, I pay.